Hey everyone and welcome back to episode 2 of this beginner's guide to space engineers. Today we will be focusing on expanding our base and building our first mining ship. Before we jump into building, I would like to take some time to go a bit deeper into the progression mechanics of the game. This is especially important to know before we start grinding down our ship. Let us open up the toolbar config, which on PC can be opened by pressing G. And there you can see a whole array of parts that can be built. However, this is just a small fraction of the parts available. More can be unlocked. By clicking on this tab here, progression, you can see a lot of the building blocks that are greyed out, which means you can unlock these. As explained in episode 1, it is possible to disable progression in the advanced settings of your safe. This can be done before you start the safe. Now, if we for example would like to unlock these building blocks here, you can see they are blocked behind one of these blocks here, which means I need to build one of them to unlock the blocks behind it. There is a little trick however to speed this up a bit, and that is by grinding down some existing parts and then welding them up again. For example on the back of my battery here you can see the interior light, which was one of the blocks that would unlock the rest. I can simply grind this light down until it just goes underneath the functional line like this. Don't grind it all the way down as we want to weld it up again. And once you do, a notification pops up on your screen letting you know you unlocked new blocks. Let us now open up the toolbar config again and there you go, all the building blocks linked to the interior light have been unlocked. So if there's anything else you would like to see unlocked, you can look into your progression screen to see what you should build before it happens. Grinding down will normally always return the materials you use to build a block, except for batteries. If you grind down a battery, you will lose the power cells in it, which means you cannot weld it up again. The reason this was done is that many players exploited this into grinding down and welding up the batteries again to generate infinite and free power. Anyway, knowing we can boost our progression, we will have to make sure that once we get to the grinding down of our ship, we will also weld up the important devices again to unlock more building blocks. Before we do that however, let us focus on the base first, as we want to build two essential building blocks to replace the drop pod. On the left of the base we want to build both the survival kit and an O2H2 generator. In between those we want to build a container, so everything is linked up and of course we will have extra storage. Open up your toolbar config again and let us shift to the second toolbar. Remember on PC you can do this by pressing Ctrl and the number of the toolbar you want to shift to. In the toolbar we will now drag our survival kit and also the O2H2 generator. To build an O2H2 generator we're gonna need quite some steel plating. The survival kit is pretty cheap to build apart from the three medical components. Now as we do not have any silver yet, crafting them is not an option. But we do have three of them in our other survival kit in the drop pod. So if I grind this one down, I can then move the medical components to the new survival kit. Now we don't want to spend too much time without a way to respawn near our base. It only takes one mistake to die and not being able to get back. So for the moment we're going to keep the survival kit intact until we have built up the other survival kit as much as possible and then quickly grind it down to move the medical components over. Alright, now I will need a lot of building materials, so I have to mine quite a lot of stone. And I don't want to bore you with that, so I will be back once I have done all that. Well, that took a little bit longer than expected, but we do have a nice stock of resources now, so I think we should be good for a while. With that out of the way, we are now going to build our survival kit and the O2 generator here and weld it up. Be sure to build the devices in such a way the connectors are lined up and will connect with the refinery once we place a container in between. Once the O2 generator is completed and the survival kit is only missing its medical components, we can now quickly go and grind down the survival kit on the drop pod to complete the one on our base. At the moment this survival kit is no longer functional, which means if I die, there will be no respawn point, and I most likely start in a completely different location. Once this survival kit is up and running again, we now have a new respawn location to get back to if we by any chance die. The next thing we want to do is go and pick up our bottles and ice from the O2 generator here and move it to the base. Once the H2 bottle is filled, I store it back into my personal inventory so I have some more jetpack backup. Now we can safely grind down both the survival kit and the O2 generator of the drop pod. With these gone, we can now see more of what is going on inside. We should normally be able to jump and crouch to enter the drop pod. We can now start grinding down everything inside, but as mentioned before, it is smart to grind these down below the functional line and then weld them up again to unlock other building blocks in the progression tab. For example, welding up these conveyors again unlocked more building blocks. 
You will notice in many other guides that players like to redesign their drop pod in a quick miner. And while this is a great solution for beginning players, leaving all the excess metal plating really adds to the miner's weight and reduces the number of resources you can collect. To avoid this, I would like to remove almost everything from this drop pod and pretty much start from scratch. The only thing I want to keep is the battery. As you might remember, if I grind the battery down, it loses its power cells and also the power and I cannot weld it up again. As we are now like between 75 and 90%, it would be a real shame to lose that power source. Now normally if we check on the bottom of the battery, you see a landing gear that is connected to that battery. So we should be able to grind down this whole ship and the battery should still be safely stuck to the ground. Still, even knowing the landing gear is connected to the battery, I would like to have a second connection to ensure the battery does not crash and explode in my face. So above the battery, I'm going to build a small cube here. Then I'm going to shift to the second toolbar and in the toolbar config I'm going to search for the piston, which should be unlocked by now. And we're going to snap that piston on the bottom of that block and then we can weld it up. You might have noticed the piston exists out of two parts. We do not need to weld up the bottom disc to make the piston work. Another thing we want to add is the MAC plate, which we can connect below the piston. It might be a bit challenging to build it like this, so you can use your jetpack to rotate around so we can easily access the bottom of the piston. And that you can weld up as well. Alright, this will now allow us to use the piston to push the mag plate closer to the ground, lock it into the ground and then serve both as our landing gear and as a way to raise the pot higher when we need to work below it. There are a few ways we can control this piston, be it in a cockpit or even a container access point. In our case, we're going to use a control panel instead. Just open up your toolbar config again and add a control panel to it. Place it on the side here and build it up. When accessing the control panel, you can actually still see your piston through the menu, which means I can see what is happening while I control it. In the menu, you can now control the velocity of your piston, which makes it extend or retract. Before we do anything, however, it is better to put a maximum distance on it, let us say half a meter. Now we can control the velocity to extend it. It almost touches the ground, but not far enough yet. Let us keep adjusting the maximum distance until the mag plate turns green. And there we go. I actually just heard the mag plate lock to the ground. This means I can now grind down everything else away. So let us grind down all the devices inside below the functional line and see which one gives us more progress when welding them up again. The beacon just unlocked some extra blueprints, which is great. The rest did not do anything. Below you can find the hydrogen thruster which if you grind it down, will give you four metal grids. Now, while you could use those grids to build a container, I prefer to use them for installing the extra thrusters on my miner. So now you can spend your time grinding down everything. All right, I'm getting pretty full here. My inventories are full, my backpack is full, so I should probably consider building a container against my battery to clear some inventory. I should, however, still have some space to grind away this line here, so that the front part disconnects and falls forward. And then later, when I have more storage, I can grind it all away. There we go. This now falls forward and we can grind that away later. Now the battery is clear, we can now build a container against it, which is going to give us some headroom with inventory. So let us select the container from the toolbar and snap it against the battery. We want it to rotate it in such a way the small access port is in the front and the two large ones are directed to the bottom and the top. After that, we can weld it up. All right, so now we have our battery, we have our container. Now we can focus on connecting our cockpit to that. Now, one little issue we have here is that the connector of the container and the cockpit do not line up. As you can see, the container has its connector in the middle, while the cockpit has its connector on the side. So we need to shift that connection point by using some conveyors. In the toolbar config, we can now search for conveyors, which is going to give you quite a selection. But we're going to take this small angled conveyor here. Now, you could use the collection of the conveyors here, which allows you to scroll through the different designs. But as we only need the angled one for now, it's going to be much simpler to just select this one. Connect one to the center of the container and then connect another one like this and weld them up. Once that is done, we can now select the cockpit 
and snap it against the conveyor like this. After the cockpit is welded up, we can now lift the ship up a little so we have more access to build our connector on the bottom here. Now that we have a cockpit, that will go a little easier. So let us jump in and open up the toolbar config again. And there we will now find all the actions we can add to the ship. The first action we want to add is controlling our landing gear. Just drag the landing gear into your toolbar and then select the auto lock on off function. Then drag the same landing gear into your bar once again and now select switch lock. These two options will allow you to disengage the landing gear. Now we're going to take the piston and we select increase maximum distance, which when we push that button will raise our ship every time a little higher. When that is done, close the window and press V to change the view. Press the key for disabling auto lock, in my case 9. That way the landing gear will not lock again when unlocked. Next we will press the button to switch lock, in my case 8. That will unlock the landing gear from the ground. Finally, I can extend my piston by pressing that button, in my case 1, and that will lift the ship from the ground. That should now allow us to walk underneath our ship. Let us now grind down the landing gear as it will be in the way for the connector. We can also clear away some more of the blocks here to create some extra room. Let us now place the connector. Snap it below the container like this, place it and weld it up. Now that we have all the basic structure of our miner, we need to add some essential parts. The one that we always should add and never forget is the gyro. This technology will allow you to keep the ship or whatever vehicle you built steady and give you more control and maneuverability. So let us open up the toolbar and add some of the blocks we need. First, we look for the gyro. The next one we want to install is a beacon, so it's easy to find our ship back if we lose track of it. We also want to install a new ore detector as we grind it down the old one. And we could also install an antenna, but that's not necessary for now. Normally one gyro is already great for the size of this miner, but two will make it more responsive. So I will be placing two of them on the top side of my cockpit. The more mass your vehicle has, the more gyros will be needed to gain control or maneuverability. The beacon will be placed here on the bottom, and the ore detector can be placed here. All this will fill up the gap between the container and the cockpit nicely. Alright, let us weld that all up. Below the cockpit I would like to build a landing gear, but I might have to lift my ship a little higher. The landing gear should fit nicely here in the middle, which will allow me not only to connect to a connector, but also land and lock my ship to whatever surface I land on. Once everything has been welded up and ready, I think it's now time to lower our ship and lock it onto the landing gear. That way we can remove the piston and the mag plate and also the remaining blocks around the battery. So let us jump in the ship and change the piston action to reverse. And add another piston action next to it, which is decrease minimum distance. Now open up the inventory, open up your control panel and select the piston and the list and then adjust the minimum distance to 2 meters. Now we can press the first button to reverse our piston speed and then press the second one to reduce our minimum distance which is going to lower our ship bit by bit until the landing gear locks to the ground. Once the landing gear is locked, we can now hop out of our ship and grind everything away we no longer need. That includes the piston, the mag plate and the remaining blocks around the battery. This is what you should be left with. In the end, the only thing remaining from the drop pod is the battery as we wanted to save the power cells. I also built a small block here in the back of the cockpit to be able to support our thrusters later on. We can now select our atmospheric thrusters and install these on the ship. Snap one here on top of the battery and make sure it's rotated like this to be our forward thrust. Then we place one here on top of the cockpit, rotated like this to serve as our backwards thrust. Then we place two more thrusters here, one in each direction to be our sideways thrust. And finally we will build four thrusters on its side which will be the lifting thrust. We can put two on this side and two on this side. 
And it seems I cannot place it here, so let us place it here, and then move the other thruster so it's symmetrical. We will not be installing any downwards thrusters, as the planet has enough gravity to pull us down when needed. In space and low grav planets, you will need to install these. Once they are in place, we can now weld them all up. Once all the thrusters are done, we just need to build a drill to make it a proper miner. Select the drill in the toolbar config and place it on your toolbar. On the back of the drill is a small connector which should perfectly line up with the front connector of your cockpit. Just line it up, rotate it and weld it up once happy. And this is our design. Pretty simple, but it will be much lighter than using the drop pod, which means you will be able to carry more in one go. We can now clear all the actions in our toolbar as none of these are functioning anymore. Before we add the new actions, let us organize our ship a little bit better. So open up the inventory and go into the control panel. Select all the thrusters, there should be 8 in total, and then turn them off. That way they are not using any more power of our battery. Next we're gonna search for our light, which most likely is still hidden. Click the little eye icon here, and the light should show up in the list. First of all, we will disable its blinking, and then we also will allow it to show up in the list. And for the moment, let's turn it off as well. Next on the list is the O detector. If you go into the settings, you can see it's not set to the maximum detection range. So let us change that to 50 meters. Now that is done, we can now group all of our thrusters. We can do this by selecting all thrusters and then entering a group name in the right column. Let's call it, uh, between brackets, minor thrusters. This we can save, and there you go, it is now added as a group in the list. Back in the toolbar config, we can now set up our actions. So select groups, and there you will find our thruster group. Select the action toggle on, off, which will add it to your toolbar. Next, we can select our block tools, and we can take the drill and drag it into the bottom right slot. Having this in our toolbar will allow us to use this drill as if we would be hand drilling, left and right mouse buttons to control digging or mining. We can also add an action for our landing gear, which you should drag into slot 3 and select switch lock as action. The battery can be dragged into slot 2 and the action for this will be recharge on off. Now I should rearrange these actions to ensure we have fewer incidents or crashes, but let's do that later. The final action is the connector, which we can drop in slot 4 and the action is switch lock as well. Both the landing gear and connector will allow us to connect to the base or land on it. Okay, now the toolbar is set up, we can enable our engines. I can press 1 for that. Then unlock my landing gear with 3 and when pressing space, my ship will take off. With the ship in the air, the HUD in the bottom right corner shows us we have 1 hour left on our battery. The controls are pretty simple, as it's the same as you would control your character and your jetpack. Pressing ALT and moving your mouse will allow you to look around, the V button will allow you to switch between views from first to third person. Space is lifting, C is lowering. Then the directional buttons is to fly around and you can also tilt or level your ship with the same buttons. Do not tilt too far however, remember you do not have any downward thrusters. Finally, we also have the drill and as explained before, we can control this same as our hand drill. Be careful not to turn your engines off in mid-flight. Also do not set your batteries to recharge or disable the dampers, as all of these will cause your ship to crash down. Alright, now the mine is completed, let us land next to our base and focus on the final parts of our base, the container and the connector. Once the landing gear is connected, we can disable the engines and hop out. There are two more things I want to build on this base, which is the container right here, which we need the metal grid for, and the connector on top of the O2 H2 generator so we can land and connect our ships to it. That way we can easily transfer resources and charge up our battery with the wind turbines. So let us withdraw the resources for the connector, place it on top of the generator and weld it up. Now it seems daylight is starting to break which is good as the next thing I want to start looking for is ore deposits. As explained before we do have some gold ore nearby here at our spawn point. Remember the drill which has a built in ore detector? Well we can use that to explore and find some ore close to the surface. Once we have some more light, I will show you how you can visually detect ore deposits on the planet. Around the connector we'll also build a bit of a platform, just in case we make a mistake or the power cuts out and the ship drops down. The platform will then catch our ship 
and avoid it from crashing down. But we will do that later. So to build the container we will need metal grids and for that we need cobalt. But we need some daylight because it's pretty difficult to see anything without it. I mean you can just wander around in the dark with your drill out but it's simply too much hassle compared with what I will show you next. So let me prepare for exploration by refilling my hydrogen bottle, recharging my energy and I will be back with you once we have some better light. Alright, now that we have daylight, let me show you what we will be looking for. Let us enable our jetpack and fly up in the sky. I will also change to third person view so I can move my camera further away, which by the way is done by pressing alt and scrolling your mouse button. If I now look down to the planet, can you see these black discolorations here? This is where deposits can be found. So right there, where we had our drop pods and the hole we dug, that is where the gold could be found. There's another patch there, can you see it? That looks clearly like a deposit. If you go there, we might find something. Now, if nothing shows up on your HUD, it might be because the deposit is deeper than the drill can detect. So we might have to come back with the ship as the ore detector has a larger range. There's another patch there. Oh, that's iron, that's great. So we got some iron here and I want to remember where I found it in case I need it. So let us add it to the GPS. There are two ways you can add points of interest to your GPS. First is to open your inventory and select the last tab, GPS. On the bottom you can now find an option, new from current position. That will add a GPS marker right here, which will use your username. You can of course always rename it, which will make it easier to find it back. So we could rename this to Iron. Then when you exit your menu, you can now see a little tag down at the position where I was standing. Now another way to add your GPS markers, let me remove this one first in the inventory. Just select and delete. Now standing at the position where you want the marker, you can open up your chat box. On PC that is by pressing enter. Then type in small letters slash GPS and then type the description. In this case, iron deposit. Confirming that will add the GPS marker to your list and show on your HUD. There is another dark patch there. Let's check out what that is. Oh, cobalt, nice. So this is what we needed and it's not that deep as well. So let us mark this one on the hut. And let us go back to pick up our little miner. When flying or driving your vehicle, you can always check the amount of power you are using. In the case of our miner, I will press all the buttons needed to move in three directions, upwards, forwards and sideways. That should show you the maximum power this little miner is demanding. You can see it's peaking around 73%, which is honestly too much to my liking, as I prefer to keep it below 50%. So a second battery will be needed to sustain that power drain. But we should be okay for now, as it's only a short run. Another thing we should keep in mind is the weight of the ship, and how much a thruster can lift. We only have one directional thruster per side, which really is not enough to keep this ship afloat. Never mind when it's fully stocked with stone and cobalt. So the only way the ship can keep flying with the weight is horizontally using the four upwards thrusters. You should keep this in mind when you're flying around so you keep the ship as level as possible to ensure you're lifting on those four upwards thrusters. Now for the first run we don't really need that much cobalt so we should be fine. So the plan is to avoid digging straight down as our ship cannot really handle that. We want to try and go in sideways to keep the advantage of our upwards thrusters. We don't need the stone right now, our main focus is the cobalt, so we will dig into the terrain until we reach the cobalt deposit. The drill will actually clear a lot of terrain using the dig function, so the ship can easily enter the hole. While we are digging, keep an eye on the indicator here, so you are aware of how you are orientated relative to the planet's horizon. It will show you both your forward and backward angle and how you are leveled. As we do not have any downward thruster yet, we cannot risk flipping the ship over, so keep it as level as possible. In the meantime, we hit the cobalt deposit. You will recognize it because of its bluish color. So let us stop digging now, as that is just wasting resources. Instead, we will open up the area above it a bit more by digging away the stone. Creating a room like this will allow us for more maneuverability. You will also notice the camera is switching between the third and first person while doing this as sometimes there is not enough space behind you. I seem to have forgotten to add more light to this ship as well, so I should definitely do that next time. 
Now, as I do not need that much cobalt to begin with, I will just try to shave off a little bit of the cobalt from the top side, just enough to get some metal grids going. Oh, did you see that? With the little bit of weight I gained, my forward thruster could not longer hold that. Let's see what we collected. So I got some stone in the cockpit. Let us open up the connected inventories. Okay, in my cargo container we have a little bit of cobalt, a little more than 1k. So let us mine a little more. Now, because of our weight, I cannot really tilt forward anymore to drill, so I have to try and keep the ship level and shave off a little bit more from the top. Okay, the ship is now weighing about 28k and we still can lift it with the four thrusters, which is good. So let us check the inventory again. I think we are good with that, that's like 4k cobalt, that's enough to start with. With that, we can now build our container and some extra thrusters for the miner. We can always come back later with an upgraded miner. When flying back to your base, you should take the weight of your ship in account, as it will change your momentum. The more weight you have, the longer it will take for your ship to slow down. Being aware of that should avoid you from overshooting your base or worse crashing into it. So, I will start slowing down pretty early, so I have less speed when I want to aim for my connector and land on it. Of course, later when you upgrade your ship, you will notice that braking will be much easier with more thrusters installed. This also means you should be careful when descending, as the weight will make it take longer to lose that momentum. It is better to take it slow and safely, than do it quickly and crash and burn, because this will hurt especially in a beginning playthrough, as you can start all over again, and you have to build your own battery. I'm now aligning the connector of my ship with the connector of the base, so we can link up. However, I should do some slight adjustments to the connector, as the standard magnetic strength might be a little bit too powerful. So let us open up our ship inventory, go to the control panel and find our connector. In the list below we can find strength, which is set to 0.015%, which believe me is pretty strong. So let us adjust this to 0.002. The best way to do this is by pressing control and mouse click on it so we can enter the number manually. And my apologies to the console players, I have no idea if this is possible on consoles, I could not find any information on it. If I ever get my hands on a PlayStation 5, I will try to make console specific guides in the future. Still, you can always connect the keyboard and a mouse to your consoles to use some of these PC advantages. Anyway, setting the value to 0.002 should make the connection much more gentle. In my toolbar, you can now see the icon of my connector letting me know it is ready to connect. So let's do that. Once connected, we can now disable our engines and also set our battery to recharge. But you should remember this, because if I now disconnect, my ship is going to fall and crash. So before you take off, be sure to check your settings, make sure your battery is back to normal and not charging, make sure your engines are enabled, and only then disconnect the ship. Either way, this is gonna happen. So we're going to be preparing for that inevitable moment and build a platform below it later. Now, while the ship is connected to our base, it is still not connected to the refinery and the assembler. So we're gonna have to manually take some cobalt and move it into a refinery. With the cobalt now being refined into ingots, we can now put the metal grids into production. For the container we will need 4 of those, so let's put these in production. Now before we weld this container up, we should wait until all the materials are produced and withdrawn. That way you can weld the container in one go, and in the meantime you still have access to the ports until then. Once the container is built, the refinery will now automatically start withdrawing the resources from my ship. After that, we will build a small landing platform below the ship, and I think that would be a great point to end this episode. Alright, I think we're gonna end this episode here. Next time you might be working on upgrading the miner with some extra thrusters, improving the base with some backup batteries, and more important tips and tricks. If you enjoyed this guide and found it helpful, I would appreciate it if you hit that like button. Thanks for watching, have an awesome day. Beeble bum out.